What's good? It's Kelby Cannon, publisher of Megan the Magazine, founder of the membership, and we live here with uh, DMV Production Duo Click Tracks. Is that an adequate? Can I still put the DMV Production Duo? That works. It, it, you know, that works. We got yeah. a lot of people back home you know, that support us. So. Okay. You know. All right. So we got the the. Uh, meet and greet for you guys tonight at Exposure Open Mic. I felt it, it, it made sense to bring you into the office and have a conversation. Anybody who's familiar with our site or the followers of us online, they probably should be familiar with y'all because y'all consistent with the winning stuff. So first and foremost, I'm always introducing y'all as click tracks, but y'all have your own personal name. So <laughs> let's start with you. <laughs> Jerome, birth name, but I go by Prometheus before we even linked up. Okay. And then, yeah, my name is Phil. Um, I used to go by Midas, but I'm like in between personal monikers right now. But okay. I like go by Phil. Right Just now. Phil. Yeah, it would be hard for me to not call him Midas. <laughs> All right. Is that? Yeah. Midas and Prometheus, aka Click Tracks, aka Jerome and Phil. Okay. They got a real nice, nice place here. Oh, thank, thank you. Right. Thank you. We we working on it. We getting things together. So, um, so all right. So, how did you get into producing? How where did your where did you get your start in music? Period. I guess it was in high school. Mm -hmm. FL Fruity Loop at the time it was called dropped right. as a demo, and it was getting spread around class. You know, it just started as a hobby. It was on the floppy thing, drives. Yeah, started getting good. <laughs> a couple of years doing that, and I think it was probably some uh, a lady friend or some kind of heartbreak that. You know, <laughs> pushed the artistry out of me. It, you know, elevated me to where I wanted to show me where I wanted to be instead of in the doldrums. But yeah, okay, got you. And so, how did how did you get your start in music, Phil? Um, I've just been playing piano since I was really young. My um my older sisters used to take piano lessons, and I, like I used to show more interest than my older sisters, and like my parents took notice of that and just and just threw me in head first as far as taking lessons. And I was in the band in high school, played the saxophone all through college. And so I've been in some sh way, shape or form, just been doing music almost my entire life, so. Okay, so you were instrumentalist. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what was your first keyboard? Uh, it's a regular piano. Oh, oh, okay. Like, you know, not like keyboard. A keyboard. Like, yeah, but, the piano, it had to be um, <laughs> I think it was, um, I don't like my first piece of gear uh -huh. was well I, we were talking about reason before that was my first software that I like ever started working out of and um like somebody gave me an ASR 12 oh. and like I was like man I'm not I'm not fucking with this at all <laughs> put me back on a computer where I'm comfortable I'll, I'll rock with that but I tried to mess around with the ASR I've like tried to mess around with the MPC too which is I like the MPC a lot um with that with that um the pad field but my first official gear i would, I would say reason reason i would say reason yeah all right so here's the question how did you two meet beat. me not even how y'all started doing music yeah. how did y'all meet beat battle beat, beat battles in dc it was at u-haul and the first one was judged by justice league mm -hmm. okay and so it's my first beat battle ever i was like days before you know peeping all the competition i came across his his profile, you know, I'm doing my little FBI work and I'm like, okay, he's a problem. I gotta work, look out for this guy and, you know, show up. There's a lot of good competition there, but of course in the finals, it was you know, me and Midas and then Russell was another DMV producer, but um, Midas ended up taking that. And then my friends all were talking about him being my nemesis. <laughs> So, you know, they're like, oh, might just show up, you're gonna have to do your thing. So we just, you know, traded some some W's in the beat battles before we start working. But I don't know what your take on the whole thing was. You know, my first battle ever, I brought out a lot of people. You know, just, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I, re I remember that night. I remember that night. And I remember hearing your beats for the first time and, and that shit was like, I was like, damn, this, I gotta look out for this kid too, like, cause the eight oh eights were crazy, and it was like early in the game before like a lot of people were doing a lot of stuff with their eight oh eights, and he was like, like his style when um, when it came to like the eight oh eights, like you were, you had like 
my friends said the 808s were jumping out the gym pretty much so that like your style caught my ear um just as competition to be respectful of and then just to like keep an eye out for so that's like i remember that night for sure your, your musicality is what you know jumped out to me because like you said i'm like oh my background is not straight piano music you know mm -hmm. and like you said beating on 808 you know that's kind of you know where my inspiration and my energy comes through in the music it's through the percussion right and through the sequence so when y'all work together as far as the tracks that you guys produce you do more of the percussion and the drums mm -hmm. and you're more of the melody person mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah and so all right so taking it back there so you you've popped up on each other's radar uh were you salty about that first l of course Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. What, I knew I what unsavory on. thing did I you call a feel that he never heard? <laughs> Actually, I probably I probably didn't use any, you know, words that describe him in a negative light. It was probably all stuff like, damn, like, I got to step my shit up. You know, that's like, because that's the most humbling thing is when you go into a battle and you get your ass beat. And you're like, okay. You brought all those people out there to see you get your ass beat? I didn't get my ass beat. <laughs> It's in the finals. Uh, all right, all right, all right. It was the finals. But like I said, I came back, you know? <laughs> no, that's what we got. The W's under the belt before we, before we did. So here's the question. Whose idea was it to, to combine forces or to um, work together? It's happened. I, I hit him up. I was like, I need some piano lessons. Okay. So we came over to do my 30 minute to hour lesson. Uh, and then it's like, you know, Right. <laughs> and then you know it just kind of it kind of made it was kind of a no-brainer from then and uh, mm -hmm. we had a friend his buddy from Maryland Les who really was like just pushing for us he wanted us to be the track titans but eventually we settled on click tracks I don't know track titan sounds pretty good Midas and Prometheus is like kind of this mythological for sure. thing to it and yeah. then the titans of old yeah I can see that yep See, your maybe friend had a, a marketing vision. Yeah, maybe a project, <laughs> maybe a project coming up, something like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now, how long had you guys been working together before you you um, moved down or started coming down to Atlanta? Because when I first met y'all, it was um, it was I want to say it was uh, it wasn't the Mighty Mighty Beatdown. It was the producer Swap Me, I think, over the Apache Cafe. Might have been I Beat Daily too. I don't know if you know. No, it, I don't. I the first time I remember seeing y'all was at Apache Cafe outside. I do. Yeah, I think it was for an here. exposure, maybe. I don't know. I think it I was. Think you saw Runway Richie up went up. Oh, okay. Well, then it's it was great. definitely exposure then. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you guys have been working together for a while, and then you started like moving outside of the city, and I and I want to ask about that because. Um, I still introduce you as the DMV production duo because that's where I, when I first met y'all and that's where y'all from. But it's like the importance of expanding outside of home. Um, how long did it take before you guys started moving around? A couple of years, was it? Was it a couple of years? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, constantly exploring avenues of where to get our music. I mean, and we started with I Standard too. You know, they have a big reach, and we started competing outside of our area, outside of Atlanta. But it's, I mean, it's super important to to be able to, you know, yeah. and especially being in Atlanta, we get people get pigeonholed yeah. a lot in mm -hmm. the sound, and we we definitely have way more to offer than you know just you know a local sound. You know, we are this international, global. Got you. So what were some of the, like, because I know you mentioned iStandard. I know iStandard did a lot of traveling. What are some of the other markets that you were tapping into outside of the DMV? So iStandard, they brought us to New York. We had competed and won the DC um, iStandard B battle. And the finals was in New York City. So they brought us, like that brought us to New York City um for their finals which was which was crazy because it's all the regional winners right from everywhere in the united states and canada and some caribbean nations so all the winners um we won in dc so we were there so all the winners come back for like a grand grand championship so it's just like night just night after night of hearing uh crazy beat after crazy beat after phenomenal producers so it's like uh like a floodgate of just 
inspiration which was which was beautiful um so that we did well um we got we made it to the finals of that in new york so that kind of gave us a little stamp in in new york for the time within i standard and then we also did battle of the bellway which brought us to richmond va um as well so just like a few battles um just kind of bringing us like up and down the beltway so okay yeah, yeah i mean it's i think big thing is like the relationships that we've made over the years like a lot of these people are hitting us up from DC, you know, DC, that medicine, DC in Pennsylvania or wherever, and like just present opportunities. They know that we can both, you know, fulfill on both sides. And I feel like the same thing that you've done for us, you know, is just who's, who brings up your name when you're not around, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we've built some relationships that people don't have a problem, you know, we drop each other's names because we respect each other's craft. That brings up an interesting uh, question for me because <laughs> It seems like beat battles don't occur anymore. Like they like they fell away. Like because I remember there were times it was like three or four going on here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I standard was moving around heavy, and I think yeah, I don't know if it's the internet or what. Like it's just like it's what I tend to find is producers tend to be far more introverted than artists. And so mm -hmm. even when they were the beat battles were a thing that were more in the forefront, it, it would be like tooth and nail to get them to come out. And then when they're out, there wasn't a lot of talking and networking. Mm -hmm. It was like, I lost that round. I got to go to work tomorrow. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so um, what what what? Because from what you're telling me, like a lot of um, your career has been shaped by the beat battles. Like you met each other at a beat battle. You developed a respect for each other at a beat battle. If it not for beat battles, you wouldn't be working together. Like then from there to expanding outside of your home market into other markets and building relationships like I met you from you coming down here for a beat battle. Mm -hmm. um, like what are what are your thoughts in, in terms of beat battles and like kind of where they've gone or where they haven't gone i think there was an explosion of just producers coming around at the time when a lot of those beat battles were happening and a lot of for me a lot of it was a reassurance and affirmations that i was in the right space and then the more battles you do, they're great, they're awesome. But some, sometimes you look at it and you're like, what did I take away after I won this beat battle? Right. And sometimes I've lost, even lost them where the judges are, you know, you, when you go into a battle, the worst thing that can happen is a, table, a panel full of judges that really have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> and then someone that's like promoters that are basically going to give the win to whoever brings out the most people. You know? right. So it's, it's a salty feeling and like people are putting money up to compete. And, uh, and, you know, and then if they don't get anything out of it, what's the point of getting up there to possibly lose to somebody? But I think beat battles are a great thing. Unfortunately, people tend to think that it doesn't translate directly to a record where most of these producers that get up there are trying to be. But beat battling is a showcase. Honestly, your biggest fans in a beat battle are going to be other producers or and then the the artists that are there to to make relationships and get beats and stuff like that. But I think Beat Battle is a, one of the best platforms for a producer, at least breaking out the box and meeting people and just, you know, you, you got to flex a little bit. You got to be confident and love what you're doing. Hmm. Maybe you want to bring back a Beat Battle. I saw, I'm, <laughs> let's, let's put it, let's throw it out. And I'll throw it on the prize money too, you know? But we need to bring it back to where it's like reputable judges, like, good prizes and studio time puts you in and you know right there to make records with people you know i think that's the, the that's what everybody wants when they sign up for beat battles for some kind of music to eventually come out of it right oh well i think that's it that interesting perspective um like because it's i don't know what's the way I, best way i could put it it seems that producers have become jaded today like just because um and I, I think it's just producers are feeling what artists have felt for decades mm. because now just like everyone was selling artists something um that explosion of producers that you talked about 
came with an explosion of offerings and services and subscriptions and packages and events and different things like mm-hmm. you want to get placements and love and hip hop and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like how as as producers do you navigate the the current music industry um, and stay positive and and stay open and receptive to working with new people and 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 trying out new platforms and and new ways of of advancing your careers uh, without becoming jaded without falling into that. That's a great question. It's um, it's something that's necessary. You have to like for one, you have to keep your eyes and ears open, not not only with the music, but with other technologies or other um, platforms. So you, you always have to keep your eyes open as a producer when it comes to things like that. Um, and I would say if you always lead or walk into situations with with an open heart and, and grounded in the fact that you're doing this for, for the love, um, I feel like for the most part, you can get around with also meeting genuine people like yourself. If you put out genuine vibes, for the most part, genuine vibes will come back to you. Um, and there are like there are definitely pitfalls and there are people out to kind of make a quick buck. Um, but that's when like time in the game um, and not everybody has that luxury. We, 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 we have that because we've been doing it for such a long time. Um, but that's it helps. Um, also just using discernment when you come across people so just kind of like listen with your eyes ears and heart pretty much so i think you just gotta be in it to win uh, for the love of it you know and then you know i've always been pretty patient especially with music it's like no matter what happens in the landscape of it i can always perfect my craft like no matter what and always can get better so i've always just used that to push me to know i can always do better so it's undeniable and then we luckily we've come across some acts and talents that we buy with genuinely you know we make good music together already but it's just knowing where it could be if you just stay down and just stay in love with what you do with the music no that's an interesting thing um that i've expressed online i talk about producer not producers artists more so but really, I classify everybody as an artist. Anyone who's a creative is an artist to me. Mm-hmm. And it's like the way the climate is, like because of the internet, because of technology, everything's so accessible that people worry about getting on before they get good. Mm-hmm. And so it's like you jump out there, like I'm pretty sure y'all have been at some beat battles and someone who should not be in the battle (laughs) has played some tracks Mm -hmm. and it was like because there's celebrities there because there's the opportunity there and they have the money or they can they have the access they're going to jump out there before they've put in their hours and perfected their craft um and so when you say that it makes me it makes me think about that but both of you said about as far as the love having the love for this thing um and that being able to get you through so like you know when you when you took your l i'm I'm gonna bring that up several times to this man Uh, (laughs) um in your first meeting um the fact that you like the love for it is yo he's dope like and it's not salty because i lost no and, but also it, it, to light that fire up under you prometheus mm-hmm. to come back <laughs> and dish him his own else mm-hmm. and it's like that that the love for the the craft the love for the art mm-hmm. um where you find people who have that same love and it's like still sharpening still right mm-hmm. um so- it is not about the individual wins or losses in the battles because you're focused on the war, which is the larger goals of where you're trying to take this. Um, And I've seen that as a thing that you guys have also transitioned into not just how you guys work together, but also how you work with um, different artists. Um, Because I've seen that you're you're working on a series of EPs with several of the members off of the website. Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to kind of just speak to that, just like, 
your approach to actually working with artists and how you select the artists that you you work with well, is, he's been yeah front running that <laughs> for the past year or so i've been real busy so he's been front running really that and i would say it's um it's it's collaborative like coming from the spirit of beat battles and the spirit of just click click tracks working as a team um when you work with us as a producers as producers i want us to become part of your team um not only in the fact that we'll like and we have done these things before we've like passed out flyers for other artists um we share a game like i was just talking about one of the artists we're working with talking about um the fact that maybe look into getting starting a publishing company so you don't only have to um get the writer side you can get the publishing side if you get if you have your own publishing so she was like I just uh, the artist was like super thankful that that I shared like so just sharing, sharing game like that. Um, I feel like it's important when we work with somebody. It's a it's a team effort, and the more that the more that we can um, help achieve that goal, and it, it's like easier on everybody else involved, and we all benefit. So so why not why not do that? So yeah, and that's that's the the thing for me is genuine collaboration um i know now you guys have um like well, taken it back like when you guys came down and it was at the apache cafe um the first time that we met um we we're just sitting outside i think it was ty me you guys ty may have been knox and some other person i can't think of right now but just having a just a genuine conversation like one of the things that I do, I often talk to people. And my thing is, um, I'm vested in everybody's success. I wanna see everybody win. So I will take time out to talk to you. Like if I see talent or I see passion in, and when I do this, I, I try to dole out whatever wisdom or advice that I feel I can give a person um, no matter where you are in your career, we all come from different areas. And so even just a different vantage point, like sometimes I sit up, I learn as much when I do my lives from the artists who ask questions as I, mm -hmm. they learn from me because I learn how certain people look at things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I remember us having that conversation um, just about production and the lease and beats and the, versus the exclusives, the the Honda versus the Mercedes, like the whole conversation and um, just having that that type of um, rapport with people. Um, often I spend that time giving that advice or talking to people and I do it less today because it often goes for not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, you were in that group of people that like, I can see like it wasn't wasted on, like taking the time out to talk to mm -hmm. and to see like certain things applied, even just as simple as just getting a subscription mm -hmm. and like, becoming members on the site and, and really using the platform. Um, like you guys, use the hell out of the platform. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I know like you guys got selected for uh, several beat battles. We did the listening session with you guys over at, yeah, right. was it Doppler or Dart? That was Doppler, Doppler. yeah. Doppler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was, uh, we did the... Uh, cookups. Yeah, the also. cook up, did the cook up with you. Um, uh, you won the first, not the first, but one of the cut the check opportunities. That's right. yep. Finished out the studio. Um, I don't know, just a lot of stuff featured in the magazine. A lot of, a lot of good things. Um, I feel like you've uh, taken advantage of the membership. We benefited very <laughs> yeah. much from, from the platform. We hope to make you guys proud too. You know, absolutely. No, you and. When we, we talk about, this is Yoshi right here. Uh, we, we have a caller. Yo, what's up? What's good? What's good? What's good? Yo. Hey, we are live doing an interview with Click Tracks at the offices. How can I help you? Oh, what's up, Click Tracks? What's up, Yoshi? Yes. Yeah. Hey, man. 
You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Complete Track Friend, one of the best, best teams out here in the streets, man. I actually on my way to pull up to the meet and greet. Uh, you, you pulling up to the meet and greet? I am. Are you over there already or are you downtown? Uh, I'm on my way downtown. All right, if you want to stop by the office, you can. I'll shoot you the address. Okay, that's cool. We'll stop by the office. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. So. Uh, and, and you told me to make sure that the food was out. That's perfect. Oh, and that was like a perfect segue, though, because that was one of the artists. Like, um, now, if my memory serves me correct, was that the first time that y'all, y'all connected with Yoshi was over at Doppler? Yes, yes. So we had submitted beats to making a mag for um it was like the producers needed to submit beats that were going into a pool of beats Mm -hmm. and then you had the artists all selecting beats out of that pool right and yoshi was uh one of the artists that selected our beat but he had the hands down the hottest song that was over our beat so we had to set that up and and um we met with him uh face to face for the first time over at doppler um but that was from that from that um Contest or I forget. Just opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like that's what we try to do. We try to just create opportunities for you, for you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, like making making use of the website um, and it's like a lot of the opportunities that are that are on the site. Um, I, I think it's really difficult for us, like to like because the opportunities honestly mean the least to me. Um, the most important opportunity is the network is the people who are on the site the people who are in the membership the people who are subscribers but that's like the toughest thing to convey um because aside from all of the like whatever the opportunity is one or two people are going to get selected from it but every single person who's on the site has the opportunity to connect with genuine people um and speaking to like i said like how you guys connected with yoshi i know you were doing something with yoshi and bantana um y'all y'all collaborated with a lot of people star michelle <laughs> yeah hold on, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah star michelle um 2.0 huh ap ap um yeah just a lot of people so um i, w- I wanted you guys to just kind of just speak to that aspect of um just the platform like some of the people that y'all met and and like what were your first impressions and and, and to any extent, if the platforms made it easier for you guys to find people to genuinely connect with. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think a lot of our most dope connections have been through making a magazine or through the platform. Um, we spoke about Star Michelle, um, Yoshi Bantana, of course, um, 2.0, and then also Nayeli Music. Um, we also met her um, through the platform, through the lives. So like if if you're out there and and like you come across the making a magazine website you have to understand how good of a tool it is because if you all you have to do is like follow this is all that we did we followed the rules that y'all laid out to maximize your uh, benefit from being a subscriber and being a member and like just what for one example would be just posting the, the updates consistently like just by doing that it made me a better content writer because at first i used to um we used to um pay for the write-ups and just to see how it would best serve us for those updates to be written so i would like we would pay for those and then study them after they they would be posted and then that allowed us to just put in the work and make and and make ourselves a better writer content writer for ourselves um on top of that it was the networking opportunities not only the face-to-face events um like media matters um which are phenomenal but it's the online opportunities as well so even even if you are a producer like us who are like a little more introverted there's there are opportunities to meet really dope artists and and for the most part, if they're subscribed, they're doing really dope stuff for their career. Um, so it's like, it's a blessing. It's, it, it really is a blessing, just um, being able to learn from the website and using it as a tool and just the pool of people we get to come across who are as dedicated as we are um, to the music and 
and as de dedicated to our growth as creatives and business people and brands like they're all like we all meet up at the same place which is making a magazine so and no and that's one of the things i, I, I like love about you guys is the simple things like like i said just following instructions like yeah <laughs> yeah <clears throat> a lot of people overlook that so it's like throw out a simple thing doesn't cost anything nothing and you see the value in it and you're like, oh, I'll apply it. Like, yo, post your updates every month. Well, it doesn't have to be a release. It could be, yeah, I did a partnership with someone. Yeah, in the studio with someone. Yeah, oh, okay. And you start doing that. Um, just as simple as like, differentiate yourself by actually promoting your records. Like not always promoting your beats, or promote your records. You guys plan on doing that tonight. Like, tell this man, <laughs> bring beats. He's like, oh, I have records. Don't worry. I'm going to wow them. Gotta put this on. <laughs> <laughs> they got to know. They got to know what we got coming down the pipe. <laughs> we don't make beats. We make hits. <laughs> so, so no, I'm, um, I'm definitely um, excited about tonight. Um, like all of the work that you guys have putting in, been putting in and um, genuine way that in which you have been connecting with your fellow members um, is the reason why that you got selected for this meet and greet tonight because um, I wanted to expand that reach to some some more people and, and spotlight what you guys have been doing Appreciate it. so I uh, just want to congratulate y'all on everything um, and look forward to seeing more continued success from you all yeah no, thank you thank you gotten way more out of this making a mag than we could have ever imagine from the first meeting outside of Patch, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, we, we, you know, we look yeah. at each other like, nice guy, shit, is this, you know what I mean? There's, there's like a million questions to get in your head before if you're gonna put some money into it, you know? And it's probably one of the best decisions that we made since we've been here and trying to break in to the industry. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. <laughs> Hands down, 100%. <laughs> No, but no, like, um, but yeah, like that's, that's, I mean, we're, we're just here to help people. Um, for me, it was like turning your passion into a paycheck. That was, that was always the goal when I started this is like, see a lot of people who are passionate mm. and like, uh, even, even if it doesn't replace your job, your everything, but it shouldn't, it doesn't have to be a source of anxiety or it doesn't have to be a source of like ex an expense mm -hmm. like you know people pick up second jobs every year around the holidays to pay for christmas you know what i mean so like but then people will turn around and act like you're not doing anything if you're not making six figures off of your music sure. so if you can produce an extra four or five thousand dollars a year off of your music if it can pay for a vacation for you right like and that's my whole thing is for anybody who's doing this like learn how to make a living before you try to make a killing mm -hmm. and so um and that's why i like i like i said I, i've enjoyed watching you guys growth uh and definitely looking forward to many more milestones and updates for y'all uh before we wrap this up did y'all have anything that y'all that y'all uh, needed to let the people know about or anything you know y'all I always got some stuff in the tuck. Uh, <laughs> October 10th, we got a single dropping with Nayeli Music. And then shortly after, uh, we're dropping with 2.0 with Yoshi and Bantana with GT, China Man Cooley, um, AP The Gift. Uh, who else? Alto Keys. So I, I may be forgetting one or two people, but we have some yeah, stuff coming. Some stuff with Yonkers and yeah. we're going to go with that yeah. one crazy. Oh one. man, I forget. What, what have Yonkers been up to? Oh man, I, he's kind of here, making his, you know, doing okay. his thing. Working, yeah, working. Yeah. yeah, killing it. He I, was at, uh, at, at Doppler too. He was there, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. I mean, he. That's how he got on our radar. Yeah, and he, the, he, he, yeah, got booked, and exactly. he got booked at Media Matters after that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then he went like five minutes over his set. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <He's> like <laughs> <laughs> give the light. No, I, I do remember. One thing I do want to say is, whenever we had a beat battle, like regardless if we let you know or whatever, you would just show up and be the loudest guy. <laughs> in the venue but it's like you know you were you know you that's just what you do for, support, you know, for us support, yeah. yeah and i've met more you know 
to us than you. I, I, I don't know if you realize, but that was, you know, when people mm -hmm. show up and show out, it yeah. means a lot. Yeah. That's my, my whole philosophy on all of this stuff is to be like, and that's how the whole company is structured, to be the first person clapping. And it's like, and I talk about this all the time. You watch the movie, someone makes their declaration of love or their impassioned speech, and mm -hmm. the whole auditorium is full and silent. Everybody's staring at them. You can hear the crickets. And then there's always that one person that just... First one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then everybody claps, and everybody goes crazy. And it was like, everybody liked it, saw the value, and appreciated it. But no one had the balls to show it. Mm -hmm. It takes someone else to reaffirm what everybody else can already see. That's true. And so like, that's the thing that we do. That's why the whole thing is structured where you have to purchase your subscription first because you can't pay us to post you. But if you pay us to post you, then that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. If you pay us to get on the stage, then that doesn't mean anything. It's like, you just pay to get in. And when we select you for something, uh -huh. you know it's genuine. You know it's because of what you do and what you bring to the table. Yep. And that's why, like a lot of the people that are in the industry, a lot of the DJs, the other media partners and executives that we work with, they follow what we post. They follow the the playlist. They follow these things and why people start getting a lot of momentum behind when we pull them in for stuff because people know it's genuine. And it's like, yeah, I can see the talent, but it's like, oh, then, okay, uh, maybe I should holler at them there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's that's what we're here to do is just to, to get the ball rolling for you guys. So, um, but you guys, it's your talent and the things that y'all do and your energy that y'all put out there to keep it going. So, uh, like I said, it's, it's always good to invest into people who are going to provide a return on that investment. And that's what we look forward to. All right. Yeah. So, so, value. so this has uh, been a one-on-one -on -one interview with Click Tracks, AKA, uh, Jerome and Phil, AKA Prometheus and Midas, yep, yep. AKA the um, Titans, what is it? Track Titans. Track Titans. <laughs> <laughs> we out. All right. What's up? What's up, man? Appreciate it, appreciate it. All good, all good. Y'all all three looking at the camera